what's up folks thank you for joining Yo. us for orbit surprise i forgot to update the title so it is not launchpad we're not working on an app we are in fact talking about what's new in graphql this week so i do apologize but we are here and we're still gonna have a lot of fun and most of y'all know that it's orbit on mondays anyway but for any new folks that were coming here looking for uh some updates on on that app we're building come join us thursday because that's when we're going to get back to that right mm -hmm. yeah so yeah. yeah so thank you for joining us everyone how's it going trevor how are you i'm doing well um could could use a couple extra hours of sleep but uh okay. but other than that we're we're no. we're chilling let's just take a second to talk about sleep because i feel like my sleep has just like gotten worse and worse um the longer that this pandemic has been going on and has uh, it well yeah because i'm still like pretty trapped in my house so i just like i don't know anxiety stir crazy like i just um yeah like i, I have a real hard time sleeping through the night now i'm waking up like four times at night on average it's pretty rough Holy smokes yeah yeah i'm not i'm not getting getting that uh getting that same issue it's more I, I think it's more like a self-induced lack of sleep for lack of a better term but um i'm sorry to hear that man yeah sleep is super important you got to do whatever it takes to restore that yeah for real scott also did not get a lot of sleep it would seem and then what's up bish thank you for joining us as always love to have you here i'm doing pretty well i mean other than this whole lack of a good night's sleep thing but i'll get through that i've been doing like cbd and stuff and that's been helping some um but yeah 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 but i'm uh, we're doing well did you do anything uh exciting this weekend um i made a cherry cheesecake this weekend Ooh. And, or i i helped i helped make a cherry cheesecake all of a sudden uh, yeah that sounds good <laughs> and um Gosh, what else? Yeah, I've just been been kind of heads down on this this uh, side project of mine, um, getting it ready for uh, for launch this week. Yeah. Yo, check that hair out, eh? Yeah, it's looking Damn. good. Yeah, love it. Love to see it. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's hidden under a hat because uh, it's looking kind of pretty much the same as yours, actually, right about now. But uh, I just woke up and then I have not showered yet this morning. Woke up very late because I did not sleep well. So I'm just like a hot mess today. Not feeling great. But yeah. That's our, that's our, we'll, 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 we'll get through it. That's it. It's just another day. It's you know? another day. And uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm saving it because I was going to work out this morning, but I didn't have time. So now I'm going to work out uh in a little bit and then uh no so fish i know it's the wrong title i'm so sorry i didn't update it it's not the soundboard today so we're this is just orbit we're going to talk about what's new in graphql this week launch pad where we work on the soundboard that's going to be thursday my apologies everyone if you came here for the soundboard uh it's not happening this morning um but yeah it will be happening later in the week so i do apologize for that yeah, yeah. Orbit, this is the uh, weekly show where we talk about what's new in GraphQL. Uh, equally as interesting, in my opinion, and I got some good things lined up. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a shorter episode uh, this week because um, there weren't a ton of things that I discovered. However, I did discover some really nice gems. Uh, so, yeah, we'll definitely dive into those. But, yeah, getting back to it, I'm still going to work out. So, after the stream, I'm going to go get a quick sweat in. Then I'm going to go take a nice shower and hopefully my day gets better from there because I really need to prepare. I've been working in the Slack API and Google Sheets API. And let me tell you, trying to work on both of them at the same time, it's pretty darn frustrating. So I need to like really get myself prepped for it. Yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah. You get, it's, it's, it's a, it's a punishing, some punishing APIs. So you yeah. gotta, yeah. gotta put the body through something first to like acclimatize before exactly. you go to that part. Exactly. Yeah, I figure, I yeah, I feel like if I work out really hard, like nothing that those APIs could throw at me could be harder. So that's, exactly. that's, yeah, that's where I'm going with that. Awesome. You, I get, you, got, you got the right, you got the right ideas. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's it. Put yourself in more pain than anyone else or any API can put you in. Moral of the story, folks. Ugh, I love it. All right. So I mean, I guess, you know, if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's dive in. However, quick note. 
if you at home have something that you would like to share with us at home, like, yeah, well, wherever you are, if you have something that you would like to share with us, drop a link. It, you know, we'd love to see it. Maybe you're working on a GraphQL project or maybe you found something cool. Let us know. Drop the link in the chat. We'll check it out. And with that, um, let's go look at our first item. What do you say? You ready? Yeah. Cool. We're, we're off to the races. Here, and we are off. Okay, so our first thing is uh, there is a new podcast slash stream uh, on, on, the, uh, on the streets. Uh, and the name of it is, uh, um, what you call it? GraphQL FM. So if y'all haven't checked it out yet, I've been able to um, catch up on this. Really great. Uh, you know, you can listen to it, um, uh, as like a podcast if you want, but the streams are really cool. And, uh, yeah. So Mark Andre and, uh, Tony Gita, they, they are the hosts of this, uh, stream slash podcast. And this week, um, uh, they're going to be chatting with Yuri Goldstein. Uh, so for those who are unfamiliar, uh, and the, the guild dev. Okay. So they've been on fire lately doing a lot of stuff in the GraphQL world, and they're going to take a deep dive into GraphQL mesh. So it sounds really interesting. I know that it's actually, it's tomorrow. And for the first time in a long time, I think I'll be able to tune in as it's happening. So I'm super pumped to actually jump in the chat and get to, uh, talk to everybody as it's happening in real time. So don't want to miss it. Go check Sweet. it out. Go hit that follow, paste the link into the pod. Yes, um, I don't have the link to the podcast, uh, but if you go to their uh, Twitch page, you can get everything that you need uh, from there and you should be good to go. But there's the link to the tweet and I could just put the link to um, the, the actual Twitch channel. I was, uh, I was, ex I, I went to excitedly type in graphql.fm in my browser and I realized that they don't have that domain, I guess. Or <laughs> they should. I don't know what the deal is, but they, that, that, is, uh, that is a missed opportunity in that, my opinion. Yeah, that is absolutely. Probably. Yeah, yo, yeah, probably is. But that would be awesome. So if, if you see this, try to get that domain because, wow, that would just be like the cherry on top it's very easy you can list the podcast there have the stream pop up when it's live oh it would be ideal it would be oh, ideal .fm. yeah yeah i didn't even know .fm was a um a domain that you could purchase That's well cool. i remember do you remember last.fm l-a-s-t Oh yeah. Last FM. yeah that's right the the six scrobbling service yeah um so that that that's the only .fm site that I know of. Seems like a but, lot of uh, opportunity there. Yeah, dude. I think I think uh, the FM extension is used by a lot of uh, like podcasters. It's kind of like re represents kind of the I don't know the the radio association with podcasts. Yeah, makes sense. But I mean, there's a I lot mean, of not, podcasts. not not on like. Yeah, not unlike the, the the name of this podcast, it does, you know. Yeah. Uh, anyway, that would that would be pretty cool. That would be cool. It would be cool, and I hope that they do it. And you never know. Yeah, it looks like you said it could cost millions of dollars. Millions. Uh, well, probably well, not millions, but probably one million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, love it. Throwback. Uh, our uh, item of discussion that we're going to be talking about here diving in is this really awesome article by Patrick Arminio and uh, let me drop the link to the chat billions yes yeah, Scott you got it um, yeah so we're just going to take a quick look at this so this is using Apollo Federation with local schemas and the, it's really good but the, the title doesn't really do the article full justice because what what he's doing with this functionality opens up a lot of really cool doors so there's a lot of times where you might have a graphql api that like you don't have access to the schema you would love to federate it join it with your api but you just don't have access uh this article teaches you essentially how to like build on top of an existing graphql api and update the schema so that you can mix it into federated schemas so what does this mean we could take something like uh, blades your uh, countries 
GraphQL schema and embed it into something that deals with locations or like whatever, right? And like we could add wow. in the functionality from your API. As a matter of fact, he gives you, uh, um, uh, I believe you are mentioned and that API in this blog post. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, cool. but, but this is deeper. So maybe I spin up a GraphQL API in AWS Amplify and I want to federate that with another uh, API or dgraph or literally any service. Contentful has a GraphQL API and I want to connect that to my API without having um, to try and get both of those, you know? Whoa. Promo sound effect <laughs> is horribly loud. I don't know what the promo sound is. You mean the music? The music is horribly loud? Sorry, yeah, well, I'm gonna continue on. Let me know what you're talking about. Promo sound is horribly loud. Maybe you Maybe can get a my... follow? Could it be my mic? One sec. No, you sound good, dude. Oh, the transition. Oh, the whoosh. Oh, <laughs> interesting. Uh, yeah, I'll have to fix good. that. I don't know. Yeah, good to know. I did not know that. Thank you for letting me know. All right. Well, in the meantime, let's do this. Let me see if I can do this. Boop. We'll switch it to fade for now, and I'll figure out what's going on with that. Thank you for the heads up. All right, cool. Can, so, can you still hear me, Kurt? I can hear you. Testing, testing. Perfect. Yeah, all, all right. right. Yeah, so recently, um, Patrick was like, I need to create a proxy to a third-party API because he wanted to federate it. So um, at work, they use Prismic to power content for their site. And they're working on a new project that is using Apollo Federation as their gateway. So this is essentially why he wanted to create a solution to this problem, right? Prismic has an API, um, but they have another uh, GraphQL API and they kind of wanted to mix all those together. So let's see what that means. So uh, as you can see, um, the way that Apollo uh, Gateway works is you list a service and you uh, give it a name and then you list a URL and then it will like talk to those downstream services. It will do introspection on that um, API and figure out how things should be joined together. Um, it says, doo -doo 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 -doo. so yeah, they can't use Prismic's GraphQL API directly because they don't have the directives in there for federation to work. For those who aren't familiar, federation is um, a way to take multiple GraphQL APIs and define relationships between them, put a gateway in front of it, and then it's exposed as one single API. So without you having to write code or do stuff like that, you can add directives and spin up um, uh, one GraphQL API that really connects multiple GraphQL APIs. So because he can't touch it, uh, he doesn't have access to the schema to make changes to it. He's kind of stuck in this situation. So what could they do to make it work? Uh, so data source is what Apollo Gateway uses to fetch data from the service, which means we can create a data source that proxies the request to Prismic. We'll be using Trevor Blades Country's API. Shout out. Oh, damn. Yeah, hot damn. Check it out. Yeah, so here uh, you can see that he's added another service and they just call, oh, uh, the chosen one. Thank you for the follow. That is a really clever name. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, thank you for the follow. Yeah, um, so here, uh, something to note is that you have to put a URL uh, for it. So here he's just got like some, you know, fake made up URL, but it's required currently in the way Apollo gateway works. You need a, a, a URL. So the only caveat, right, is that they need it. So the next step is to use a build service function. So in the Apollo gateway, there's this function called build service. Now, if you don't do anything, it won't do anything, right? So like this is uh, something that you can kind of uh, work on top of, but you don't ever need to do it. All you need to get started with a gateway is this. So not a lot of people know to dig in and use this build services, but Patrick was like, you know what? I'm gonna do this. So here he's saying, if the, um, uh, the URL is countries, they're gonna return a new local GraphQL data source. And then he's going to do get countries uh, schema where this comes from. Um, that's a good question. Does he mark that out? Probably. Yep. 
get country schema cool yep. so what he's doing is basically going out getting your introspection schema from your api and then going to create the schema and then what's awesome is he's going to do transform schema federation so here he's passing in your schema and look now he's extending it so now he can extend the schema from your country's graphql api which is really trippy Damn. when you think about it yeah that is super true. Yeah, it is. This is really neat stuff. Um, so a few things going on. He's going to talk about just like kind of why you need this X share the link. Yeah, for sure. I shared the uh, link to the tweet, I believe, but here's the direct article. There you go. Yeah. So finally, the last piece of the puzzle, uh, which is using the utilities to do like kind of transformations. So, um, so finally, when you call transform schema federation, this is going to get a compat like a federation compatible schema. Uh, so here it's saying that the only option we are passing is telling federation that the schema is extending the query type. So all fields provided here will be composed. We can also pass more options here, but at the moment we didn't need that. So in other words, like you could extend types within uh, the API itself if that makes sense. So like, uh, I mean, if we went and looked at the country's API, we could dig down into some of the types that exist there and we could extend mm. them, add new properties to them from our existing API, reference the um, uh, country's API within our own schema uh, and more. Pretty wild stuff. Yeah, that is. That's, that's really cool. And I think that the, maybe, maybe the, kind of the big takeaway of this is that you can is that you can federate schemas that you don't necessarily own yeah and that that's pretty that's cool because in my head the, the 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 catch with federation is like it's not federation is not for me because i don't have i don't own more than one schema that i need to stitch together but there are there are cases where I might have dependencies on third party schemas that, you know, I'm doing some crazy thing on my client yep. to like make the data together. That could be a good a good case for absolutely um, using federation. Yeah, in this way, absolutely. It, yeah, it's it's uh yeah I could think of a, a bunch of use cases where this would become. Um, super useful right like uh you have a managed say you know you're using like a managed um uh api or something like like uh one graph or you you know you're using like i mm -hmm. said contentful you could have your cms data in one api and then you're using like dgraph to store like associated data like likes on posts and stuff like that in another graphql api you could join them together and work with one single api as opposed to having to use multiple so it does open up quite a few doors or like your app you know references github now you can just federate just the github say, api yeah. yeah it's just like github api you know, shopify api like, the list goes on there's 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 other kind of like the, these third third party apis that that like yeah. give you shopping cart api give you give you like some some yeah. kind of data that that is outside of the scope of your yep. your focus area yeah and you want to bring that data into your to your core API? Yep. This would be a great method to do that. And we got Patrick in the stream too. Oh yeah. Uh, thank you for thank you for putting that blog post together. It's really really well uh, well crafted. Yeah, it's super awesome. Super pumped about it. Yeah. Love it. Love to see it. I love to see like I'm such a big fan of like creative uses of GraphQL and you know people just like kind of pushing mm. uh, GraphQL and trying to make it you know more flexible to do more with and this is like a, a, a great example of that. Yeah, very exciting, especially in the managed GraphQL space. Like I can't stress it enough. You don't have access to the actual schema, but you need to do things with it. And like boom, here you go. Go extend your types. <laughs> yes, yeah. absolutely. It, it, it's super cool to see uh, see creative uses. Yeah. Um, I, I I totally agree. Yeah. So let's see. Next up on the list, we've got um, 
Uh, oh, this one is pretty pretty awesome. So, uh, Moon Highway, the lovely Eve Porcello and Alex Banks are hosting uh, free GraphQL sessions. So they have a calendar lined up for the fall. They've got a lot of free GraphQL sessions. If you are not familiar, Moon Highway uh, does a lot of GraphQL and React training. Is it moonhighway.com? That's probably... Oh, it is. Yay! I nailed it. Love it when that Me happens. Me too. Come on, GraphQL FM. This could be this you. This could see? be you. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, look, they've, they, they've literally written books on learning GraphQL and learning React. I see the site is not update, updated with that yet, but they have actually written the book. Uh, you can go and you can sign up. Uh, let's see what they've got going on. September 1st. Oh, snap. That's tomorrow, y'all. October 5th, November mm. 2nd, December 1st. So if you uh, are interested in getting some free GraphQL training, it seems now is the time. Now is the time. No time like the present. Mm -hmm. That's what they As say. As they used to say back um, in the day, thou only liveth once. Mmm. <laughs> Sounds familiar. Yeah. <laughs> sounds. It does sound familiar. Sounds very familiar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Um. Yeah. No. This. This is. This is an outstanding. Outstanding. I was gonna say it's a good deal or something, it's but it's not even a deal. It, it's just. It, <laughs> it, it's. It's not even a deal. You just. You just need to show yeah. up. And. Uh, but. But the, the. The point I'm trying to make is that usually. You gotta pay for yes. this, this, like this kind of thing. Moon Moon Highway puts these, um, these these kind of events on, and and like produces this this type of content, uh, like at a premium, normally. And so uh, this this is a rare opportunity where you can um, step into a free session with them. Right? You said it was free, it's right? It's free. It's free. Free webinars there, once a okay. month. No, I, okay. Yeah, um, I, I yeah, this this is a can't miss opportunity. If you're out there, you're new to GraphQL, you're intermediate with GraphQL, or, or you, you you want to uh, you want to just reinforce your your knowledge of uh, of this cool technology, then um, you got to put this on your calendar and, yeah. and make sure you show up. It's uh, it's gonna be a good one, I think. Yeah, yeah, and it's awesome. And I just can't um, stress enough like how good of uh, teachers Alex and Eve are. They make the content very approachable. They have a lot of fun. They're just very uh, fun people. They really want to help, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely check it out. I think it's worth checking out. Yeah. 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 So my next question is, does anyone in the chat have anything? Because that's that's it for this week, folks. That's a wrap. That's what I got. So before we disappear, uh, I want to know, like, does anyone else have anything that they want to share with us? Because we love to hear it. Otherwise, in the meantime, what do you got going on? Uh, Trevor, what are you up to? Um, Any streams planned well, this week or anything? Yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, well, uh, I'm. I'm going to be going through the process of launching my uh, launching a major update to one of my side projects tonight. Um, and I was thinking of streaming the whole thing, uh, like streaming the process of actually deploying uh, deploying a major update like this. Should be fun. We'll get into um, like using some of these services like Net uh, Netlify. And Heroku, oh, nice. and uh, I ha I got I've got I've got a list next to me. Zapier, oh, um, I'm, I'm interested. Using Zapier to um, to schedule daily deploys on Netlify. Yeah. Uh, so stuff like that. I'm gonna be messing around with Postgres queries to to try to migrate a database to uh, a new a new like shape, I guess. All right, um, all right. So yeah, that should be fun starting at, it's going to be a late one because I don't want to, I want to min minimize the amount of like downtime, downtime, I guess, or like the, the amount of people disrupted. So I'm going to wait till 9 PM Pacific, which is uh, midnight Eastern. So apologies for 
for Eastern Time Zone people, but yay if you live in Hawaii or <laughs> Japan, or something, uh, then then you're you're in in for a, a treat. Nice. But uh, yeah, so I've got that that on tonight, um, and then streaming on Wednesday, and then Thursday, Kurt and I will continue building our soundboard app that we started last Thursday. Yep, we certainly will, which will be awesome. Real quick, Alan Turing, thank you for the follow. Um, yeah. Damn, uh, Alan Turing. I know, right? Yeah, you know, that's when you know you've made it. <laughs> Dude, I'm such a huge fan. <laughs> I, you know, fun, fun fact, Turing was the first language I ever wrote a line of code in. Wow. I wrote, I wrote, I, I learned Turing in high school. <laughs> Interesting. They taught you that in yeah, high school? Right? They must have hated you. That was that was the first <laughs> the first line of code I ever wrote was uh, that's turn. hilarious. So the, shout out to you. The Alan. first line of code I ever wrote was H one hi close H one in HTML. Oh. That was the first thing I ever wrote. Yeah, that's that's a pretty uh pretty favorite oh, yeah. programming language. Yeah, I didn't know about Hello World. <laughs> I didn't find out about that until a couple of years later. So otherwise, that I would have done that. Uh, yeah, I guess let's talk about some upcoming streams. So you already talked about Launchpad on Thursday. And last week I misspoke and said there were no mission briefings this week. And I was wrong. It just hadn't been finalized on the calendar yet, but it sure is now. Uh, so this Wednesday, we're actually going to be talking uh, with uh, Kyle Schrade from StockX. So if anyone is familiar with StockX, right, it's like a shoe kind of like bid ask platform, like a stock exchange for shoes, right? Is that, am I, okay. yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, so he's going to be coming on talking about dealing with uh, issues that they're, you know, they faced with GraphQL at scale. What's up, Todd? Thank you for jumping in. We might be wrapping up here in a minute, but I always love to see you. Thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, and so, yeah, we're going to be uh, taking a look at uh, GraphQL at scale uh, to handle StockX, who he said the numbers are going to be, like, pretty fun uh, to take a look at. So we're talking about, like, you know, when they when they have, like, a serious um, uh, bid going millions upon millions of requests to their GraphQL APIs. So some really interesting problems to face there, and they'll be talking about federation. So cannot wait. Very excited for that. And then next week, uh, we're going to be taking a look at getting started with uh, GraphQL in Vue. So this is one that I'm definitely excited about. Uh, Daniel uh, 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 Madalisto, Madalitso, Madalitso, sorry, Daniel, I apologize. Fury is going to be coming out, or uh, Malgamaves, as uh, many people might know him on the interwebs. We're going to take a look at GraphQL in Vue. So I'm excited for that. And then... Uh, the week after that actually does look to be pretty free. I think I've got more stuff in the pipeline for I now, think crap, for now it's open for now, but I, some things I can tell you I'm working on, uh, is getting, uh, some people on here to look at building e-commerce apps with Jamstack and GraphQL. Uh, Graph CMS is also going to be making an appearance, talking about some of their stuff. So there is a lot more in the pipeline lined up. Just got to get it all officially onto the events calendar and schedule everything and dot all the I's and cross the T's and we'll be ready to rock and roll. But yeah, lots of good stuff coming up. Sounds good. It does sound uh, good. Yeah, lot, lots to look forward to there. Um, I'm so excited for uh, for Thursday, and we're, we're gonna we're gonna pick back up. If you if you missed it, we left off. Oh. The the app was in a in a bit of a not 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 disarray, but we, less less than like satisfying end to last stream. But we're gonna yeah. we're gonna jump right back in and and try to fix some bugs. It'll be fun. Oh yeah, yeah. We got we got our butts whipped by subscriptions, but we are gonna knock it into line, get it all figured right. out, and get yeah get the ball rolling again. It should be a lot of fun. But uh, yeah. if not. You could just come and, you know, if you're a masochist, just watch us get destroyed by subscriptions for an hour and a half. Uh, but no, we'll be fine. We'll have it up and rolling. Uh, any plans on doing GraphQL with Spelt? I am open to doing GraphQL with honestly just about anything. So, yeah, if you'd love to see it. Now that I know, I got it on my radar and I'll try and get that figured out. Yeah, um, as a matter of fact, let me go ahead and write that down. Um, because yeah, you know, I, the whole point of this is to put out the content about GraphQL that's going to help you all be successful with GraphQL. That's all we want to do. We want to make your life easier. Uh, and yeah, if you think GraphQL and Svelte sounds like a good idea, I'm 
definitely going to write it down and make it happen. We make the graphical content that people want to see. That's, that's the that's the thing. Um, I wonder what the what the GraphQL situation is in Svelteland right now. Or, or well, I'm I'm curious to curious to get an update on on Svelte. The last time that I really really like heard a lot about Svelte was when I first heard about it like two years ago or something. Oh no! Um, so much has changed. I, yeah, yeah. That's why. That's why I was gonna. That's why I was gonna say. Yeah. Like, in yeah, in, in that period of time in 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 web development land. Oh my goodness! That's the. That's yeah. like. You might uh, have, you might just be talking about dinosaurs walking around. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. That felt. Oh man, that's so old. We threw it in the garbage. The new, <laughs> the new felt. It's like there. There's a. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever seen the Onion movie, but there's like they do a parody of like. Or not a parody, but like a joke about how how fast computers uh, like become old and obsolete yeah. and and like completely obsolete. Yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, I haven't seen it, but that sounds really funny. I should check it out. Um, I'll try to. Uh, yeah. Onion, the Bates computers. <laughs> Too funny. Yeah, share that Bates, in the chat because I gotta check that yeah, out. Here, um, we're not, we're not gonna we're not gonna watch it live, but but you guys are welcome to check this out and um and and open it in a tab for for when we uh when we sign off later. Yeah, absolutely, I love it. Might not be much, might that, might not be that much later though. It might not. That's actually gonna be in like a minute unless anybody else got anything else that they want to bring up. While we wait for any links, just in case any burning GraphQL desire, should we look for someone to raid? Yes, so we've got a uh, raid, um, got a raid set up here. We're gonna, we're gonna be raiding uh, joincombo.com as they build uh, an app with Next.js, ooh, React, ooh, and ooh. GraphQL. Oh, okay. Uh, and Join Combo builds tools for streamers to find new sources of income. Oh so no way! That's pretty that's cool. That's perfect. Uh, there's, there's this, there's, yeah. It's, it seems like the perfect kind of confluence of yeah. Uh, all the stuff that we like to talk about. So we're gonna, we're gonna give them a raid and uh, let's do it. Hope you guys enjoy. Right away. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick that off. You do that kicking it on and with that just once again thank you all for joining us uh we love having you here every week with us to kind of talk about what's going on in graphql um yeah warms warms my heart to see you all here so yeah thanks again uh for myself and trevor and uh yeah whenever you're ready let's do this thing peace out bye everyone <laughs>